Hey, what do you say Weekend Warriors? Today we're gonna make a reverse seared smoked picanha. I'm doing it here in my offset smoker, but you could do this in any kind of a smoker, pellet smoker, Weber kettle, Weber Smoky Mountain, doesn't really matter. I've got this smoker coming up to temperature now. We're gonna be cooking around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And for me today, I'm using some post oak. I've got a little bed of charcoal down there to help get the fire going. And here's our picanha, the star of today's show. I like to go on the underside, which is the non-fat cap side. There's going to be some silver skin uh, that I want to remove on this side. So you just take yourself a sharp knife. And it's similar to uh, trimming a brisket. Take off especially this silver skin. That's gonna be really tough to chew through. And so we'll clean this side up. If you've never uh, bought one of these before, I'm sure most butchers these days will know what a picanha is, uh, but you could also ask for a sirloin cap. It's the same thing. And it's going to have this triangle shape to it. And still reasonably priced. One of the things I love about picanha is how easy it is to cook. It's not an all-day cook, which makes it nice. And it's delicious. Here's your fat cap, uh, which you want to keep most of it on. Uh, you may want to trim a little bit like it can get pretty thick in this range. It just depends on whether or not you think you can render most of it. I'm just gonna take a little bit off of this top here. The fat is actually one of the things when it renders that makes this cut so delicious. So, don't trim too much. And I'll show you what to do with that fat, or one of the things you can do. All right, so now for the rub, I'm not going to use, uh, you know, like a sugary barbecue rub. I'm going with the Killer Hogs Texas brisket rub. Basically a salt, pepper, garlic. And we're gonna coat it nice and evenly. Get the edges, and then we'll get this fat cap side. Okay, we'll just pat that in. And we're gonna let this sit on the counter in the kitchen at room temperature for about 30 minutes while that smoker comes up to temperature. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. My smoker is up to 225 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where we're gonna keep it. And we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the smoker right here, fat cap up. And we're gonna take it to 115 degrees Fahrenheit on the internal. And then I'm gonna cut it into some thick steaks finish it off over the coals. This won't take long. Here's a simple and delicious chimichurri recipe for you. So this is a half a cup of pretty much boiling water. You want it to be hot. Tablespoon of kosher salt. I'm gonna whisk that in until it dissolves. And then at the same time, I'm putting in a tablespoon of dried oregano. So this hot water is gonna kinda help it steep and rehydrate. So get that going. One tablespoon of red pepper flakes. About a tablespoon and a half of the prepared garlic. Okay, and I'll just let that sit for a minute or two. Let that oregano rehydrate. And I've got some parsley that I've rinsed off from our garden. And I like to leave it a little bit on the bigger side. So we're just gonna roughly chop some of this. And in that goes, 
two tablespoons of red wine vinegar to the mix. And now we're gonna whisk in one cup of extra virgin olive oil. Ideally, you wanna make this in the morning or the day before. You wanna use it because it'll give the flavors time to uh, work together. And that's kind of the consistency you're looking for there. More of a sauce. And earlier I said I would show you what I like to do with some of this fat. So I would not do this on my pellet smoker for obvious reasons, but in an offset like this, I take the fat, throw a couple pieces in the fire throughout the cook, and that's going to mimic the flavors I would get from my drum smoker. We get all the grease dripping down on the coals and those flames creating that kind of nice authentic barbecue flavor. So the fat doesn't go to waste, it goes in the fire and helps flavor the food. And it's been an hour and a half and we just hit 110 degrees Fahrenheit on the picanha. Take a look at that. That's beautiful. Really nice color. I can tell that the fat has got a nice render on it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take this out and let it rest for about 15 minutes or so. In the meantime, I'm going to get this little grill going over here. This is my uh, Mill Scale Metalworks Yakitori grill. I love cooking on this thing. Basically what I'm going to do is transfer some coals out of there, put them in here, and then uh, we're going to get a sear on these and I'll show you that here coming up. Back to our beautiful picanha roast. It rested about 15 minutes. We took it out at 110 degrees Fahrenheit and it carried over, continued to cook and hit 120. So what I want to do, look at all that juice, wow. I want to slice this with the grain, not against, but with. So it's kind of on an angle like this. And I'm going to cut, you know, this end piece. It's just an end piece. I'm not worried about it. But from here, we're going to go pretty thick for the rest of these. So like that. Okay, so I know there are those of you who would eat this just like it is, but I want to get a little bit of grill flavor on it, so let's take it over to the grill. We're going to lay these down, maybe 30 seconds per side. Make sure we get that fat cap too. The thing about picanha, just due to its shape, you're going to have pieces that are cooked more than others. Um, not a big deal in this house, but if you insist on rare or medium rare, you're going to pick from the center. Good render on this fat cap now. That should be it. It's looking good. Yum. It's one of our steaks. Just go on with the good stuff here. The chimichurri sauce. Load that guy up. And then we'll go ahead and Cut it into some pieces. My mouth is watering. There we go. 
Woo. It's medium to medium rare. Let's get a bite. I can smell the smoke coming off of it. Mmm. Real tender. Oh my God, that was so good. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, one way of saying thank you is to smash the like button, subscribe, and also I am doing a fundraiser for Operation BBQ Relief. Uh, you'll see the little donate button over there. We're trying to raise $5,000 by the end of the year. We're already at $1,075 as of this morning. So when natural disasters happen, these folks come in, they cook hot meals for the first responders and the people impacted by the storms. It's a really good cause. Thank you very much for donating, those of you who already have, and I hope uh, you'll donate today. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.